Hello everyone, my name is Terence Kernahan and I'm the Ontario NDP MPP for London North Centre. I'm joined by my colleague Jenny Stevens, the MPP for St. Catharines. We're here today to reintroduce the Viewer Discretion Act. For some time, the people of Ontario have been exposed to graphic and upsetting anti-abortion flyers arriving unsolicited in their mailboxes. Today, you'll hear, hear from concerned parents and individuals who have received this traumatizing and unsolicited in misleading literature in their mailboxes. As a caucus, we've heard from countless families who found these images traumatizing and unwelcome in their communities. We've heard their voices. If passed, the Viewer Discretion Act would require this type of literature to contain a warning label so that young kids and other Ontarians aren't exposed to this kind of harmful and misleading imagery. I'd like to welcome Katie Dean, the founder of the Viewer Discretion Legislation coalition who reached out to me and has been a champion for this cause and leading the way. Katie. Thanks Terence. Thank you Terence very much. Hello, I wrote my things out. So my name is Katie Dean and I live in London, Ontario. In late 2020, I co-founded the Viewer Discretion Legislation Coalition or VDLC for short in response to the graphic anti-abortion imagery being delivered in my city at the time. My story is very personal and it's tough for me to talk about. In 2004, I received traumatic news during my second pregnancy. My body, my ba sorry, my baby was not developing right. There were, t sorry, I get choked up. There were terms thrown out to me like lemon-shaped skull, banana-shaped cerebellum, splaying of the spine. Viability was unknown, and if she did survive to birth, death was likely not far behind. I had, no cho I had a choice to make. It was not an easy choice, but in the end, I chose to terminate the pregnancy to save my child from pain and suffering. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. I have no regrets, but it does not diminish the pain I still feel to this day. The first time I received one of these graphic flyers in the mail, I thought I was being targeted. I was in shock, and it triggered a trauma response in me. The grief and memories came right back. It was tough. I went into a depression, and my mental health was adversely affected by the images left in my mailbox. Fast forward eight years, and I find out the images are once again being delivered in London. I find out more about the organization responsible for them and the history of their usage in Canada. For the life of me, though, I do not understand how these images can be allowed to be delivered to private homes uncovered. I found out that Canada Post will not deliver them because of their disturbing nature. I also found out that Ad Standard Canada has had hundreds of complaints about these flyers. Ad Standard Canada has also ruled against the pro-life organization behind the images, asking them to change their ads to remove these images, but these requests are ignored over and over by this organization. Unfortunately, Ad Standard Canada cannot enforce their guidelines. As my husband is a lawyer, I started investigating even further into the law and found there is a gap. People can deliver bloody images of dead fetuses to your home uncovered, and there's nothing we can do about it. This is how the VDLC was born. We advocate to protect people from these images by creating laws to do so. The VDLC has petitioned on the streets of cities across Ontario. We have thousands of people who follow us and appreciate the work we do. Thousands upon thousands of signatures have been collected province-wide to support this private member's bill. If I held up one of these images right now, none of you here could use it in your media story, either in print or on TV. That's how upsetting and inappropriate they are. I'm eternally grateful to the City of London for taking the lead and protecting their constituents' rights by passing a bylaw that mimics this private member's bill. Freedom of expression is subject to reasonable limitations. This is not about abortion. This is about human decency. It is a nonpartisan issue that I hope the Ford government will take to heart and help protect all Ontarians. Thank you. Katie, I just want to thank you for, for sharing your story, for sharing your strength, and being such a leader in our community and seeing this legislation passed by London City Council. Next, I'd like to welcome to the stage the MPP for St. Catharines, Jenny Stevens. Well, thank you for joining us today to discuss the importance of the Viewer Discretion Act in Ontario. My name is Jenny Stevens, and I am the MPP for St. Catharines, and I am proud to be a co-sponsor of member MPP Kernahan's bill. As a society, we have a responsibility to protect our citizens, especially our youth and servicemen and women 
that should feel safe in their own homes. The Viewer Discretion Act is a crucial step in achieving this goal. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge a visitor to Queen's Park here today, Sean Bennett. Sean Bennett arrived today with his partner, Melody, and his service dog, Siren. Sean is beside me here. He is the director of the Valhalla Project, a Niagara PTSD support organization for veterans and first responders. He is a veteran of 26 years with a decorated 31-year career as a firefighter. He also personally struggles with PTSD. When he saw the dead fetuses and graphic imagery draped over his mailbox without his consent, he was forced to view it. It was triggering to him. It is, a vi it is vital we listen to Sean and his story. Action is required for veterans and frontline responders with PTSD because this crosses the line. Let me take a moment to consider the impact that the violent and graphically explicit content can have on recovering minds. In St. Catharines, I have heard from countless residents that they were worried about their children being exposed to these images. I saw my own daughter have to deal with a similar situation with her two young boys. So covering up this material just makes sense. It really does make sense. It is important to remember that this act does not prohibit the creation or distribution of any particular contact. Rather, it simply requires that the warning be given to viewers about potential harmful content. This allows the individuals to make informed decisions about what they and their families choose to look at. Simply, it is about ensuring children and parents and residents recovering from PTSD are able to live in their own homes and feel safe in their own places. This is a clear solution to clear problems. I thank MPP Kernahan. I thank the, our team. I am hopeful the government sees the proof of concepts in, in jurisdictions like London that already is doing this and soon in St. Catharines and Niagara. So we can take the necessary step in protecting our citizens, especially our youth, first responders from potential harmful content. Let us work together to create a safe and more responsible environment for all. Thank you for, for having me here today. Thank you for our visitors to Queen's Park. I would now like to take a, a moment to introduce Sean Bennett. Here you go, Sean. I'm handing it over to you. <laughs> and Siren. Sorry. Thank you, MPP Stevens. Um, as, as she said, I'm a veteran and I'm a first responder. I'm also a chaplain, a fire chaplain, and the chaplain of the Ni Royal Niagara Military Institute. I've seen a lot of stuff in my life. In my neighborhood, I have at least 15 respon first responders, nurses, doctors, et cetera, and every single person was traumatized by this. After running one of my programs, the next morning I walked outside, and this was draped on my mailbox, for forcibly folded so that it would hang out Having to see that stuff again is uh, crushing. It's destroyed my last four months. My nightmares have gone up. This poor dog has to try and sleep in the morning because she's waking me up out of nightmares at night. There's no reason for this. Talking to the children who were delivering them to get their, their volunteer hours for school, uh, they didn't see any problem with it. They're told that it's okay. These, there's no reason for this. Um, we are triggered, and I don't think anybody's really thought about the first responder portion of this and veterans, the things that they're forced to see over long careers, myself, decades, uh, it, it destroys us. And, um, sorry, shaking. It destroys us. And uh, I'm hoping that this bill will pass and that I never have to see this again. My friends don't have to see this again. Thank you. To Katie, to Sean, I want to thank you. You've shared incredibly impactful stories with us today. And Sean, I just want to thank you as well for your service for all of us. And thank you to Katie for being the inspiration for this legislation. As you can see, these images are particularly difficult for those who've experienced pregnancy loss, for those who are experiencing different types of PTSD, and for children exposed to these images without 
consent. This is why we're reintroducing this legislation today with Bill 80. We want to protect viewers from seeing graphic literature against their will. Since this bill was first introduced, a number of Ontario municipalities have adopted this precaution, including passing new bylaws in London and hopefully soon in Woodstock as well as St. Catharines. Similar bylaws are being explored also in Toronto. This is important work, but we also need a provincial solution to this problem. This bill is not about limiting freedom of expression. It's about offering people a choice of whether they want to engage with the content or not. As we stated earlier, this is about consent. The City of London, in their graphic image delivery bylaw, stated that, and I quote, Council is satisfied that the unregulated delivery of graphic images to res residences does cause harm, end quote. And we could not agree more. We hope that the government will listen to the voices of parents across Ontario, individuals across Ontario, and support the Viewer Discretion Act, Bill 80.